Welcome back to part two of this getting started with power mill guide. Today we will cover tool creation, basic facing operations, as well as giving an introduction to view mill simulation. I'm going to start by creating a new tool. To do this, from the Home tab on my Ribbon Toolbar, I'm going to select the Create Tool drop-down menu. From there, we can see all of the different types of tools that can be created within PowerMill. For the moment, all I'm going to do is select End Mill. This will open up our Tool Creation dialog. The Tool Creation dialog is broken up into three sections. At the top, we have our tabs. Over on the left, we have our geometry section, which we will populate with the dimensions of our tool. And finally, on the right, we have the tool assembly, where we can see a preview of the tool that we're going to create. In order to create a new tool within PowerMill, we need to populate first the diameter of the tool, and then also the length. After this, we can also define a tool number, as well as if we choose, give this tool a name. Note on the right hand side of the screen that the preview of the tool has now been created in the assembly area. While we're here, we may choose to also add a shank to the tool. In order to do this, come up to our tabs and select shank. The shank allows us to define a non-cutting portion of the tool. In order to add a shank, all we need to do is select add a shank component. By default, the system will give us a shank that is equal to that of our tool. However, if necessary, we can come in here and change this. For the moment, I'm just going to accept the defaults. Finally, I'm going to give this tool a name and then I'm going to select close. Notice how the tool that we've just created has automatically been activated. So now we're ready to go and produce some operations. In order to do that, Come up to my Home tab on my Ribbon Toolbar again and select Create Toolpath. This opens our Strategy Selector. PowerMill groups toolpaths by functionality to make it easier to find what you're looking for. We can see these different groups on the left hand side of the window. As I click through the menu, notice how the toolpaths we have available to us in the right hand menu change. Take some time to familiarise yourself with this now. Once you're happy, select Curve Machining, and then Face Milling. This will bring up our toolpath settings. Similar to the Strategy Selector, there is a menu on the left-hand side which categorizes different toolpath options. And, as before, if we click through these menus, the relevant information is displayed on the right. I'm going to start by giving this toolpath a name. This is not a required step, however, it is best practice to do so as the name we specify will be displayed in the Explorer and will make our life much easier further down the line. Next, I need to pick the face height. This is the height in the Z direction we wish PowerMill to produce this facing operation. If we know the height in Z, we can simply input the figure. If, like me, you're not sure, then we can select Pick the Z value of the face. This allows us to dynamically pick data directly off the model, so all we will need to do is left click on the top face. Finally, I need to define a step over, which is done as shown. And once I'm happy with that, I can press calculate. Now that we have our first operation created, we will need to simulate the toolpath to ensure it beats our requirements. To do this, come up to our Explorer and expand the toolpath section. From here, we will see the toolpath that we just created. Now right click on our toolpath and select simulate from start. Just a quick side note here, if you select settings from the drop down menu, the toolpath settings menu we discussed previously will appear. Next, enable our view mill simulation as shown. Now that our view mill simulation is turned on, we can use the slider to control the speed in which the simulation will play, and then we can use the play button to view the simulation. Once our simulation is completed and we are happy with the result, the last thing is to store our simulation. This is a really useful time saver and will allow us to store the simulation in its current state. This will allow us to revert the simulation back to this state using the restore button. 
The advantage of this is that it allows us to simulate subsequent operations, and if they don't do what we want, we can simply restore, modify the operation, and rerun without having to simulate the entire part again. I will touch on this subject in more detail in future videos. Finally, we need to switch back to our model view in order to produce additional operations. To do this, from my ribbon toolbar, select the Mode drop down menu. Now select No Image. This essentially hides our simulation. If we wish to switch back to our simulation view, select the Mode drop down menu again and pick Rotatable. This concludes part two. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.